name's Andy Osborne from Optex Europe. Today we'll be going through the commissioning process for the SIP detection range. Inside your box with your SIP detector, when you open it up, the first thing you'll see is a clear plastic bag. This has got these bits inside it which are used for the install installation process. Then you've got the installation manual and obviously then you've got your detector inside. Inside your clear plastic bag, you've got your template, which has got your fixings and your cable entries marked on there so you can just drill straight through into the wall. And then you've got your masking stickers. These are used to mask off individual zones in the uh, near area so that you can prevent false alarms from foliage moving around in the wind etc. And then you've got your viewing plate which goes into the AVF-1 and this is used in conjunction with the masking stickers and also the, the masking plates which are in the side of the detector for your far area. And then you've got your tweezers which is used to apply the masking stickers and your 4mm allen key which is used to adjust the um, left and right up and down of the detector and to get into the connection chamber. And then you've got your screws. You can use your own fixings by all means but if you do please use the washer and gasket as this completes the IP rating for the de detector base. People do use these days um, tech screws. Now you can get tech screws with gaskets already on and this will still complete the IP rating. What we'll do now is go through the actual detector. On the side you've got a screw which when loosened off will enable the head to be moved left or right. At the back Another screw, and when loosened off, it will enable the head to be moved up and down. And you use these two purely for when you're doing the alignment of the head. And then we've got a screw at the back here, and then that is used to uh, fix the base plate to the main body of the detector. We'll take that off now. And it is a captive screw on there, so you can't undo it all the way. And then when we take the main detector away from the base, we need to make sure we undo this clip. And all it is is a press at the bottom, and the main body will come away from the fixing plate. So, and then you've got your cable entries, and then you've got your fixings. And you've got your power, tamper, Normally closed or normally open contacts. Your trouble, and then you've got your normally closed or normally open contacts for your creep zone if you're using the slash five range. So now we'll go through the main detector. You've got the far zone, you've got the near zone, which is in conjunction work together to generate one output, and then you've got the creep zone, which is on its own output. After you take the lid off, that exposes your white light filter and your dip switches for the sensitivity for each individual zone and also your dip switches for your and or logic, turning off your far zone and then you've got your dip switches for your timing logic. If you take the white light filter off, then that exposes the mirrored optics. And just here, this is your active beam, which is used for your anti-masking. And then you've got your lid tamper. At the side, you've got your blanking plates. These are held in by the retaining sponges. And these pop out. And then after you've looked through the viewfinder, it will tell you which number you'll need to put this in to blank off the side. You have a blanking plate either side of the far zone and a blanking plate either side of the near zone. 
Again, this is on the 3020, 4010, 44 range. This is the SIP AT. This is an accessory which you'll need to purchase, which will enable you to commission the actual detector itself properly. Inside the box is the AVF-1, which is used for the viewing plates. And then you've got the AWT-3. This is the audio walk tester, which is used so that you can hear what the pyros are seeing. So the AVF-1 is designed to go in the, det in the detector one way. You'll see that one peg has a groove on it and the other peg doesn't. So the idea being the peg with the groove goes in and then depending on how the detector is mounted you can rotate it so that you can still see through the viewfinder. No matter, no matter which way you put the plate in you need to make sure that the arrow is pointing up to the sky. And then you've got your AWT3. This plugs into the detector, into this jack here. So let's go outside and get a unit commissioned. Hiya, we've moved outside now to commission the SIP4010 which is up on the wall behind me. First thing we need to do is check that we've got the right viewing plate for the actual detector and to do that it is labelled on the top right corner. Now these plates come with a protective film on there, there's one either side so you need to make sure that you re remove the films otherwise it looks like you're looking through a foggy screen. Now, what we need to also make sure that when this viewfinder plugs onto the detector, that the arrow on the viewing plate is pointing to the sky. So that slides in there just like that. So what we'll do is now we'll go up to the detector, insert this and we'll then start the alignment process. So the first part of the alignment process is starting from the detector position using the measuring wheel walking out 40 meters as it's a 4010 it's a SIP detector. So as we get to uh, 40 meters the detection pattern will be 10 meters wide. As we're monitoring the approach for the uh, car, from the car park to the building what you use is the uh, shelter, what you can see at the bottom, and then measure out five meters from there to the center of the detection pattern. So what we're going to do now, using the viewfinder, is align the detector head to where we've just wheeled out. The important bit, as I say, is to make sure that the arrow is pointing up to the sky. And all we do, using the left and right, up and down, is get the, the wheeled position in the centre of the far zone, which is your individual numbers on your viewing plate. It's as simple as that. That's ready for audio walk testing now. So, this is the audio walk tester for commissioning the SIP detector range. It gives a audio signal that you can listen to so you can understand what the pyro is seeing as it's been walk tested. It has two leads on it. We've got the phono lead, which is used for the LRP detector range, which the SIP's replaced. And then you've got the multi-pinned lead which is used for commissioning the SIP range. 
With the audio walk tester, you can get the power from the actual detector when you commission in the SIP range, or there is a battery at the back if you're commissioning the wire free versions and the LRP if you're doing a return visit. First thing you need to do is make sure is that the right detector is selected and then select your power source and then you need to make sure that you're using the far area and then go to the near once you've walk tested the far area now you'll hear a difference between when you're doing this on the near and far because this is now listening directly to the pyros within the detector once you've commissioned the near and the far you go to the creep and then you go to the alarm output the alarm output is then listening and reacting to only when the relays would fire if this site is being attacked what we need to do now is make sure that the detector is ready for walk testing to do this dip switch number one should be in the up position which is default this year and or logic when the dip switch number one is in the up position which is on this is in all mode and then what we can do on the far zone turn the sensitivity to super high and then you will get a, a detection of the contrast between your calf muscle and the background area so what we'll do now is plug in the wall tester and this goes into this jack here wrap this around so that the wall tester isn't in front of the unit and select your power so and you'll hear if the unit's ready if you put your hand in front of the in front of the detector so what we should do now is get our test target to walk at 40 meters across the detection pattern to ensure that we are getting pick up on the far zone only And as you can see, he's walking across the detection pattern. And we're getting a good pick up. Now what you would do, if this is on the side which is a fence line, is go outside the fence and walk behind the fence to ensure that we're not getting overspill out of the detection side. So what we're going to do now is zigzag all the way down for the length of the far zone until the unit stops picking up. That's where the units stop picking up. So you need to go back to find the exact spot of where the stop picking up, make a mental note, and then we move on to the near zone. So we turn the dial to the near zone, turn on the power, and then we get our test target to walk from the detector position away from the unit, zigzagging again until the unit stops picking him up again.
this scenario, we're getting around about a five metre overlap between the near zone and the far zone. As you can tell, the near zone has finished. And Matt is now at the 40 metre mark and we're getting no detection. So what we're going to do now is align and walk test the creep zone. So what, the creep zone can rotate from two, uh, 270 degrees and when it's mounted at four meters, the detection pattern is five meters out and with uh, near enough 10 meters wide. Reason being is so that as in this scenario, we can rotate so that the center of the detection is going out and then one side of the uh, 10 meters, so your first five meters, is overlapping with the near zone. And this side of the five meters is protecting someone coming from walking underneath the detector to try and attack it. So once it's aligned, insert to that scenario. And put your lid back on and then just complete your audio walk test. What we're going to do now is change the sensitivity of the far zone back to medium and turn dip switch number one off which puts the detector into and mode. Now when you complete the walk test if you don't get pick up then what you need to do is change your sensitivity up to high and then you should get pick up within the UK. Going to super high is really in uh, really hot countries. So what we'll do now is complete the walk test for the alarm output. And once we do that, you'll notice a difference in the tone changes. So you can see there now. It's, a it's just a change over tone straight away. There's no warble in the middle because you're not listening to the pyro. Well, we are now going to complete the output test using the audio wall tester. So the dial is on output, so to get the power. We've verified that the uh, dip switch settings as to how we're going to leave it. And now we're going to complete the wall test. do you walk zigzagging the complete length of the detection pattern and you should get pick up all the way as the uh, target gets to the detector completed the walk test procedure for the SIP. So what we're going to do now is seal the detector up. First of all, make sure that your fixings are tight for your up, down, left, right adjustment. And then replace the lid. Put the lid in at the top first, and then push down, because it's got two clips at the top, which retain the lid into, in its position. Now, if you move the head, after this has gone in, then you will get a tamper alarm as the three axis accelerometer would have seen that your head has been moved. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Hope you found it informative. Now, we do do online training as well, so if you'd like to register for that, feel free. Thanks a lot again, and my name's Andy Osborne, and we'll see you next time.